Hey, what's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, I'm gonna teach you how to paint realistic reflections and ripples on the water surface. And what better example than this cute little swan. Now, a bit of a note, if you wanna take this to the next level, make it more realistic, photorealistic, because it isn't photorealistic, it's somewhere in the middle, then of course you need more patience to work a little slower and to get all the small details more accurately in. My goal here is to give you a brief rundown of the idea of the concept, but I will go at it real time and show you exactly how I pull this off and hopefully it will help you. So with that being said, let's get started. So first step is drawing as always. Now, two important things. First, I want to make sure I get the swan in the right place. And second, what's gonna be really important here is the reflections, okay, the ripples. And I wanna get those realistically in. So these are gonna be a major focal point and mirror the swan. Now let's get started with blocking in the overall shape. This will be good for you to see how I do. So I'm kind of looking for different distances. What I figured is that the head of the swan, the leftmost side of it is about a third from the left, which is around here. You don't have to be fully accurate at this stage, but you do need to get it in the ballpark. So that's gonna be the left edge. Now the top edge is really closer to the top. I'd say something around here. Then the tail is really close to the edge here. And the bottom part, which is fairly important, I would say is about um, a third from the bottom. So this is also important because we need to leave enough room for the uh, reflections, okay? So this is how I block in the overall structure of the swan. It's really simple and you can barely see it, but that's left, top, right, bottom, and reflection goes kind of the same way. Now within this framework, I'm going to block it into very major and rough shapes. Okay, so the head of the swan, somewhere around here. Okay, remember this is the topmost part. Now the neck gets really close to the right edge then touches the water. And I'm using mostly straight lines to convey these shapes in. The reason why I do that is that it's just simple to get um, as, as compared to uh, curves, okay? So this is what allows me to kind of get the, the overall proportions in. The body is actually halfway through to the, to the, if you look at this length, it's in the middle, somewhere around here, okay? Something like that, that will be a good way of simplifying. Now I feel like it's a little flat, so I'm gonna add a bit more mass to the top. It feels a little squeezed. Uh, so a little more mass to the top and also round out the bottom. Now we still don't have almost anything, but it's gonna make sense soon. So for the reflection, I'm just gonna put in the rough shape uh, once again. It kind of flattens near this area, so that's the neck. And then the body goes something like this. Now we have the main block in. We're gonna start working on the details. This is the most important part. Um, I'm just looking for the structure I have and building over that, okay? So the head, I could even get an oval-like shape for the head like that. And then we have the beak coming out of it somewhere in the front connecting to the eye. Now look for proportions like the eye. Does it sit in the center of the face? A little more to the front, a little more to the back. Here it's a little center and left. So I'm gonna place it somewhere around here. The beak, you have this orange part that starts inside the face, goes connects here at a bit of a lower angle actually. Then the bottom of the face connects to this rounded imaginary shape. Let's bring out the shape of the head a little better. And this connects to the neck that goes somewhere around here. Now, a lot of people wonder, how do I convey uh, texture? How do I show that this is kind of, a, kind of feathers or a, a furry texture for the, not fur, it's, it's really feathers uh, for the swan. So the, the, the texture thing is about to me, edges and values. If you get the values right and you get the edges to look right, it will make sense. And I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, in a few moments, okay? Now the bottom of the neck, fairly flat actually, and then connects here, we have a ripple of water because it swims and then it goes down, goes up again, goes down, connects here. This is where the, the leg is. So I'm just gonna place it in here somewhere, leg, the tail. We wanna get it a nice sharp shape. Then we have another feather here, 
couple of other feathers. You see, these are the edges I'm referring to. The edges will hint at us that this is a uh, uh, feathery texture, okay? Same goes for here. You see there's some jagged edges. It's a wet feather, feathery texture. Same thing. Now, my proportions may not be perfect. It's probably the head should be a little smaller, a little more to the front, but this is the overall way of doing it. Had I not filmed, quite honestly, I'd probably get it more accurately because filming and, and talking at the same time can be a challenge. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I think this is close enough. Now here we get to the gem, the, the ripples. This is all about observing the shape. We got the overall shape. Now here we have to start creating the ripples themselves. So if you look at this area, you get a flat line that's kind of close to this flatness, but then it goes into a ripple. Like it's actually a rounded shape, you see? So what you have to do is draw it as you see it. There's no way around it, really. You see there's this curve here. And here you have a bit more of a room to play around with with it because it's a fairly abstract shape and it's, it's ever changing, you know, ripples. If we take the picture one moment later, it's gonna look a little differently, but Overall, you just want to get the feeling right here. I'm aiming to actually mimic the, the ripples as I see them. Okay, this is smaller. This goes, the water goes into the ripple a little more. Now, here's where it gets really important. You want to get these separate ripples. What happens is the water surface breaks the shape you see into ripples that kind of touch it but are detached from it. Again, this is what will give it the beautiful look. Notice about this ripple is completely separate. That's so cool, I love that effect. Same here, we have another one here and another one, let's, let's get it like that. So you see you get separate ripples that don't even touch the main ripple. And that's how you get that effect in. And sometimes you will get the water really going into the, the ripple and the, the reflection, sorry. Uh, when I say ripple, I'm, I'm using ripples and, and, um, and reflections interchangeably in this context, okay? Now for the head. Now this has to mirror what we see here, which is why we first drew this, because we get that full shape and then we can break it off. So this is a little simpler, I think, but it's basically, you see the waviness same kind of waviness for the ripples. Now here it gets really distorted. The thing with ripples is the farther they are from the base, from where they touch the actual thing, they get usually more distorted and more separate. So where it's close to the head, you get this fairly smooth shape, but as it gets farther, it gets shakier. The reason for that is that the ripples start very small and then they expand as they get farther from the object. So the skewing gets even worse, so to speak. And here where it's really close to the, the, the edge of the page, notice how much of a distortion happens here. And you get this sub ripple that goes like that and you get the beak in and it's separate from the head. This is really a cool effect to get if you can get it right. Now I'm gonna draw, all the rest is water, but I'm gonna draw just for myself a couple of ripple lines for the darker areas. The reason I do that is I just wanna get the overall direction of the ripples, okay? When I put them in with the paint, I'll have something to indicate the overall direction, okay? Now, I just wanna get my eraser out and get rid of some of the frame lines because they break the shape of the ripples and I don't need them anymore, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. Here we go, we don't need the frame. The frame is very rigid. Now it's time to get rid of it, okay? No more frame, and now we're ready to paint this, okay? I'm gonna erase everything just as I've done so far. Uh, just making sure there isn't anything I missed. This shape here. We have a bit of a shadow under these feathers. Um, but I think aside from that, the legs may be a little larger. And then we have the shadows following behind the swan. But I think with that we're ready to go. So let me prepare some things and then we'll start painting. So we'll get started. Uh, admittedly, this wash is gonna be a little tricky. So to the water, I mean. So to remove some pressure off of myself, what I wanna do is actually add some very gentle shadows to this one itself. Uh, and I'm gonna have these be fairly neutral. I honestly don't know if I should go um, warm or cool on this. I don't necessarily want to go warm and then contrast it with the water's coolness. So let's go somewhere in the middle, neutral, uh, a bit more red, something like that. And I'm just going to start putting in some um, some shadows, Just it's, it's only going to be where I see them and it's fewer places, okay? 
and then we'll get to uh, the heart of this, the main part, which is, um, as you know, the ripples. The thing is, you see how there are beautiful reflected highlights on this one? Uh, it is something I want to preserve. So I'm going to use actually fairly light paint here and just leave some of these highlights on there. Some of these uh, reflected light highlights. At this stage, this is going to be so light compared to um, the, the water. The water is not going to be super dark, but it's going to be much darker that I can really, I can't go too wrong here as long as I keep this fairly light. Okay, so as long as that's the case, I'm going to be fine. A uh, bit of shadow here. There is a bit of that shadow there, but really not a lot. You don't want to overdo this. Uh, I'm going to come back with just some water and a very small amount of paint. It may look too dark, but because we're um, because we're using um, such watered down paint, it's going to dry so much lighter as always. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Now here, I'm going to leave a couple of water uh, reflected light patterns on the neck and hopefully that will make sense. But here's the key part and the reason why I do this is I'm now going to connect it to the reflection. Now the reflection is a, a darker version of the, the swan if you pay attention closely. It's simply a darker version of, of it. Um, so I'm going to use a bit more paint for this, this part and it looks to be a little warmer. So I'm going to warm things up just a little bit. And the key here really is to get these merged while you uh, can and do it in the same kind of layer. So the entire reflection is a little darker than the actual swan. So I'm actually going to just cover it up pretty fearlessly with a bit of a darker base wash. Okay. Then the swan itself. There's a bit of a shadow here. I'm fine. If that's a little dark, that's not a big issue. Um, so you can see here, I'm going to use a bit more water in some spots to lighten it up, then dry the brush on the towel, go back. Now this again may seem a little too dark and, and weird because we're <laughs> that highlight is fairly uh, light as you can see, but uh, don't worry about it because again, it's all going to fall in the right context as soon as I add the uh, um, the more uh, dark, watery wash for the background, okay? You don't have to worry about it too much. Now, if some areas appear to be a little too dark, I can just put in some water, you see? It's gonna move the paint. When you use such a wet wash, um, it's all pretty malleable. You can change things up on the fly. Um, just dropped a bit of paint here, let's get rid of that. Uh, and I'm just gonna continue with the neck here. Dry it a bit, but Again, it doesn't really matter this much. And what's going to happen next is I'm going to let this dry. See, you can paint quite loosely because the background is going to be fairly darker. But I'm going to let this whole thing dry and then I'm going to come back um, with the background. Now, this on second thought looks a little darker. So let's patch this up <sighs> here as well. And that's pretty much how you uh, get it. Let's go here. I could start putting in the orange for the face as well. Let's do that. It's very light as well. So water, some red. Um, it is quite a strong orange. So let's see what we can produce here. A little more on the peachy side actually. So let's add a bit more red. See what we get here. I think this will do. Let's put that in and see how that works out. It's, it's granted it's a little more muted. Let's use a bit more red, a little more yellow. Um, I don't mind, you know, with colors, usually I don't mind the saturation be a little different from the reference, either more saturated or less saturated. Uh, I don't care as much about that. All I care about is the overall harmony of the color to work. As long as that works, I'm fine. Uh, but in any case, I think this is good enough for now. Let's let it dry, come back, add the background, add the darks and everything, and uh, it's gonna look super cool. So the next wash is the really challenging one uh, because I wanna get all the ripples, almost all of them and all of their details in one go. So far I used the Skoda uh, Versatile number 16. I'm using the black set, by the way. Um, and here's the case for it. Just beautiful uh, Skoda sets. Um, so 
I used the versatile number 16, but now I'm gonna switch to this thicker one, the Ultimo Synthetico, uh, just to get this wash going. Um, now here's the trick. It's all about timing. We're gonna do this wet and wet. Some areas of the water are fairly light, um, and so I wanna start with a wash that isn't fully dark. I don't wanna lose the, again, the saturation and fun of this thing, and I can't go back and put in the smaller highlights. I can, in theory, but I won't. I'm gonna go uh, purely from uh, light to dark. So what I think I'm gonna do is start with a, an initial wash that's probably this dark, um, try to get it in one go, and then start adding in the ripples. And this is gonna be the, the lightest part of the wash, okay? So let's get started. I have to get it in one go. The reason is that um, I need to get some ripples in um, in a wet, wet, wet in wet manner if I want them to blur properly, okay? Which is why I have to get a lot of this stage in one go. Now, if I see that parts of the painting start to dry on me, I can pause, use a different brush, get the wet and wet action going, and then continue. But for now, let's just be quick about it. Remember what I said about edges? This is where they come into play. The edges on the right side of the swan are what's gonna make this look like feathers. So here we go. Here we can actually take a break, but let's go over this line. Now let's continue with the left section. The quicker you are about this, the more even wash you'll get. My paper, paper is at a slight angle, not too big of an angle. Now I'm gonna flip it. I hate doing this while filming, but I have no choice because I wanna get this line accurately, so let's do that. I hate flipping and, and maybe hurting the orientation of you as the viewer, but I have no choice. And now we're gonna, uh, sorry, go around here. I'm gonna use my spray gun just to keep the area up top alive for a little longer. And I'm gonna switch to the smaller brush, get a bit more uh, stronger opaque paint and start putting in some ripples. Because if I'm not gonna do this now, I'm gonna lose the chance to do this. They're all conforming to the same direction. Okay, so very horizontal. I'm using a combination of um, French Ultramarine and uh, Thalo Blue here. And what I have to do is almost bury the lightest wash uh, with these ripples, okay? The ripples are gonna leave just fewer lighter areas. I'm not gonna do it exactly as in the reference photo because that's gonna be pretty impossible for me. I know that because <laughs> I still have to work on that particular skill getting these types of ripples in. But hopefully it will create the impression I'm after. Okay, so I think with that, maybe even let's merge some of these together. Let's go like with a larger one here larger one there that goes all around this one for continuity. Doing my best. Uh, worst case, you can darken some of that later on. Um, you want to get to a point where you put in as much as you can. I know this is pretty... Um, I'll probably have to refill my, my blue soon, but I know this is pretty... It looks a little crowded, but don't forget it's still pretty soft and it's gonna... Uh, blur and blend a little more. Now we have to continue with the lower section, so let me just use a bit of water, make sure that edge is still alive, and continue here, around the uh, ripples. I'm gonna use this paint too, I'm gonna get a bit more paint here, and generally try to go a little darker as I get closer to us, the viewer, like that, and here is where it gets really important to get the shape right, okay? So I'm gonna work my way around those highlights here, do my best to get it as accurately as I can. See, I'm working with the edge of the brush to get the ripple shape I put in earlier. And it really is one of the most important parts of this painting. I'm actually gonna flip it again, sorry about that. Again, I don't like doing that, but I'm not skilled enough to get these, uh, you know, just by keeping it flat. This is why I love uh, sometimes, you know, to paint just without filming. You can do whatever you want, flip the paper as much as you can. You don't have to think about a viewer, it's not a show. Um, and I'm trying to get enough painting on my own time there. But in any case, left section's done. Let's go back with this brush and get some dark ripples in. 
these are gonna be darker so let's add a bit of red to them you see how that works darkening these up a bit making them larger too because they're closer to us and on to uh, the, the right and center section. Okay, so again, following the shape of the ripples as carefully as I can. Let's end this one here. My hand's a little shaky out of uh, stress. I'm not even kidding. Like they're actually shaky because I'm a little nervous to get this right for you. Um, that's fine. You see, I deal with these things too. So uh, don't worry about that kind of a thing too much. You can paint with shaky hands. I see a lot of people that get beautiful results, turn it into a gimmick, turn it into your own thing, just make it work for you. Um, now, I may have overdone it with the ripples. Honestly, I, I feel like I had no chance because I wanted to get all of those beautiful ripples in and I hope that the uh, more dark details I'm gonna add to the front, the more this background will kind of blend uh, and become less significant so it doesn't feel like I added in too many details see I hope that makes sense going around this one this section notice how I haven't gotten to it yet let's start here and in fact let me switch to uh, this um, smaller brush the the tip on these brushes are crazy good uh, so you can get in work in all of the small details so well actually now I'm a little concerned about this section let's continue from here you see, it's always a balancing act. You have to work a bit here, work a bit there. Honestly, I see these videos of people doing wet and wet and reworking a wash um, so much that I have no idea how they get these, uh, how the wash is still wet. I have trouble with that. My wash is dry. I don't know if it's due to weather or skill or <laughs> whatever it is. For me, the washes don't stay wet that long. If you're experiencing this as well, then I'm in the same boat. Really, um, I also experienced this washes dry, drying on me. So I don't know how these geniuses do it, but somehow they, they get it to work, you know. The wash stays wet for long. Uh, but in any case, let's go through these. Now, I know this wash takes time, but remember that this is the majority of the impact of, the, of this painting. So it should take time and it's fine. See, right there. Going around this shape, like that. Once you realize that you're done with 80% of the painting after this, then it makes sense that this wash should take time, you know. A bit more of the paint. Honestly, I think if I go like this, it's gonna make it much easier. The thing with rotating the, the paper, for me, it causes a lot of trouble too. Um, not because only because it disorients you as a viewer sometimes, but because I have to edit these videos and then I have to take into consideration the part where I rotate the paper. Um, so I can't just run it as time-lapse, I actually have to pause it, rotate it, or cut out this part altogether, which I don't like to do, but in any case. Uh, here we go, I'm just gonna add a couple of darker areas here. My calculations was, were right and I actually have enough paint here. Uh, so pretty large dark shapes, like so. Merging into what we already have. Now, I am going to get these dark areas you see here, the ripples around the tail, because that's where it, you know, wags its tail and swims, and then you get all these shadows in this area. Kind of like that. Hopefully, the uh, reflection makes sense at this point, doesn't look too detached. Okay. This is hard, you know, painting these um, ripples in a realistic, convincing manner isn't easy. And I'm still learning, honestly, so I'm gonna do the best I can, but you know, you see works by people like uh, Stanislav Zoled and, and people I featured here on the, the Painting Masters series, and then you realize how much more you have to improve. This is the, the, the rigor sword brush I was telling you about in another video, it's the Perla, uh, a quarter of an inch. This one's so good, I love it. I still need to get used to its shape, honestly. Sometimes I don't get it right or the way I want it to, um, but it's a really good one. So you see here, I'm putting in this thick paint. Now, these areas are starting to dry, which is a perfect timing to put a very thick paint on them. You know how you always say you have to be careful when you put um, wet paint into a already starting to dry wash? Uh, here, because we're using very thick paint, we're fine. 
we can still do that. Um, and it's gonna work out really nicely. I actually love the way this brush creates the highlights, so the, the shadows. So this works out great. A couple of shadows here. I think I need to get these in the lower right corner a little darker, honestly. So let's get some of that paint in, go like this, go like that. Try not to have all of the ripples the same place. So one is to the right, another is to the left, then another one is back to the right again. Uh, if you can vary it, it will make it look more natural. Because that's how nature works, you know, the patterns don't really... Some patterns do exist, obviously, but... Um, we create much more patterns as humans than nature does, so... That's another thing to watch out for. I actually got the neck shape wrong, but I'm gonna ignore it because it's too late now. Uh, I won't fix it. I should have just cut more into it. It's one of those things where you can get really frustrated and think you messed it up completely when in fact you haven't. So don't worry about it that much. Now here's what's gonna happen. I don't even have to wait for this to watch, to uh, dry. Let's start um, adding in some darker shadows to the reflection here. I just have to watch out for the... Uh, paper to not you know drip paint all over it uh, and the reason I'm gonna do that is and I knew I'm gonna have to come back with another wash this is a fairly a la prima piece really uh, is that now the reflection looks almost as dark as this so let's make it a little darker especially here near where they connect these two parts so we have a bunch of shadows there and reflection so you have to kind of work your way around it notice the leg here I'm gonna just start darkening it it's not as dark as it's gonna be and then add uh, kind of ripples in the reflection to convey that this part gets a little darker and it also works out like ripples you see it still preserves that pattern this uh, waviness here so you have to watch out for these things and actually let's use a darker value for all of the right section here all of these hopefully that's the right decision um, and I'm not losing too much of the contrast I think I'm not because it's gonna dry fairly uh, lighter let me pick up some of this paint here see you always have to put in add remove to, you know I want more contrast here so let's lighten these regions up Let's blend some of that. Hopefully that makes sense uh, for now as ripples. Now here's the thing, sometimes you won't, you'll look at the painting and you won't be certain, that, usually you won't be certain that you got the thing, everything you wanted right. So what I'm gonna do is let go of all of this highly complex section and visit the face, okay? So let's start adding in some dark values for the face. Um, taking a break with the rest of this for now. I know some of you may really hate the fact that I'm low on blue, but I don't care. I'm just going to use as much as I can all the, the to, till the till I have to recharge it. So here I have a bit of uh, darker black color. I'm just going to start adding it to the beak. Actually, I'm going to switch back to this brush. Uh, this is more than sharp enough to handle this kind of a thing. Let's use the. I haven't used the carbazol violet in a while. Let's use a bit of that to get it dark and connect it, merge it with some, uh, what do you call it, yellow ochre. These two can create some nice neutral uh, grays and blacks. Let's see what we got here, make sure it's fitting, yeah, okay. Now we'll get to uh, the beak, the face. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. So here we go, now one thing you wanna pay attention to is Notice the um, highlights on the black parts. So you have this, I can add that later actually with some opaque paint. But let's try working around them for now. So I have this black section of the beak, but then there's a highlight because it's, it has a shiny texture. It's smooth, the black part is smooth and also um, it may be wet because you know it's a swan, it's swimming. Um, so that makes it have some nice uh, highlights that are kind of a reflective light, you know. The eye also has that thing going, so like uh, that right in the dead center. If you miss it, it's okay, you can come back with um, paint straight out of the tube, get that back in, but I think we did a good job here uh, in conveying these 
shiny highlights. I actually messed up the shape of the head itself more, but that's fine. Now for the leg, I'm gonna just put that in. Let's do some uh, dry brush, because the leg is fairly blurry. And you know what, at this stage I'm actually gonna start putting in some darks. Uh, I feel like that's a good point. You see all of these reflections by the leg? Very complex shapes, you just put them in as you see them and hope for the best, really. As I uh, talked about many times in the past, you don't always have control over these things. You just try and get the best impression you can, and if you nailed it, that's perfect, and if you haven't, that's not the end of the world. See, I'm tempted to start putting in some of these deeper shadows at the back, but let's, let's go back to this area, focus on that. Here we have this very nice ripple, so it starts thick, right under the uh, neck and body, and then it goes thin. It's these small shapes that help to make this look, you know, real in some way. Um, now the thing is, I don't want to touch too much with the water on the water because I think they all need to be darker. I'm contemplating whether I should darken them or not. For now, I'm in the camp of no. Let's not do this. Um, let's make this a little longer here. Uh, but I'll have to think about it a little more and see what I feel good with. Uh, I may have to darken everything, all of the, the, the watery wash. Uh, again, I don't know. We'll see. Now here, notice the nice patterns around this area. Let's try and get those uh, patterns in. So it's like this kind of a wave. And it goes back here and it goes back like that. And then it has another thinner shape that follows it to the T. Now, I'm obviously not getting them as accurately as I could, but these things, sometimes you, you may think to yourself, I didn't get them as accurately as they are, but it will help in creating that impression. Already, you can start feeling like water moving, you know. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here, even though I don't see it. You know what, let's, let's do a bit of that here. Sometimes you can just put in these effects and they'll end up working, even if in the reference you don't see them. You see how that starts to work? Uh, we have a bit of black here. Uh, as long as you conf conform to the direction already there, you'll be fine. So here we have some of the beak. Let's go add it like that, add ripples. If you go by the wavy pattern, let's break the, the reflection completely here. Get this here. I feel like the contrast between the highlight and the water is a little weak, which makes me believe we may have to darken it up again. So let's get started. <laughs> with more details and we'll figure it out as we go along. Again, it's all decisions. I could just decide to stop now, be happy with it, uh, but something tells me let's make it a little stronger. Um, for the... Uh, I wanted to do something else here, but I forgot... Oh yeah, to add this shape here. So I'm gonna make this wash much lighter, add a bit more blue to it, because this area is lighter, mistakenly lighter. Uh, here we go. And you see here, there's a lot of reflected, I don't know what you'd call it, reflected shadow even. It goes like this around the edge of these shapes of the body. Um, you want to be very gentle with these. And then what I'm going to do is blend, okay? I know it looks strong because I'm planning on blending. So, just water in the brush, try and get rid of the paint. And get this to blend towards the rest of the body, see? Sharp on the top, soft on the bottom. And that's how you get this sort of feeling. See here? Now, again, if you're having a hard time blending, you just take a piece of tissue and you just go around the area that's still moist and you'll blend it right out. Now here I'm gonna lift a bit. I don't want it to be as dark as it is. You actually get some nice reflected light from the blue of the water on top here that I don't know if I wanna necessarily get. Let's try. So I'm just going to put in some blue here. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's, let's do that because this line should be smaller anyway. Let's shrink this shape in and hopefully it'll make the structural miscalculations I've made less obvious. There we go. I'm going to lift back some of the top part here, just like that. Make it a little lighter still. Uh, and I think that's good. Let's zoom out a bit, look at the overall kind of thing. Okay, so I went ahead and carefully examined the reference photo. And what's missing for me here is uh, some cohesiveness in the water, meaning I, 
Notice that some areas are lighter with me and the reference photo is pretty much all darker. So here's what we're gonna do. In these situations, it's easier to flip it, rotate the whole thing and start working from the area you want darker. So I'm gonna start darkening the whole top section and then connect it to the bottom, make it a little lighter. Okay, so it's gonna be a gradated, fairly light wash because I don't wanna get it black, but I wanna get it darker. Okay, now here's the thing. What's important for me here is not to lose the, the happiness of the blue, the vibrancy of the blue. So what I'm gonna do is use a very unified wash of phthalo blue. I poured in a bit more of it here and I'm just gonna use, sorry, I don't need this brush actually, I, or you know what, I'm gonna use this one. But anyway, uh, I need a very even phthalo blue to just glaze over the whole thing make it a little bit stronger, a little bit darker, but not too much, okay? It's very tempting to go too much. And I also need it to be pure, because otherwise if I have even a bit of red here, it's gonna neutralize it. Even a bit of yellow, it's gonna neutralize it. So let's get started and I'm now considering where to start. Let's start here. Now I know this may seem strong. It actually may end up being too weak, by the way. Um, let's get going, we'll see what happens. The most important part is for me to actually adhere to uh, the, the highlights I already set up, okay? Uh, so let's go edit like this. Sometimes I'd have more of an angle here, uh, but I'm good with that. Now notice how one more thing, I'm not even touching the right section because that's gonna create a big mess for me and I'll have to worry about two sides simultaneously. So none of that, I'm gonna work on this left section. I'm going to quickly complete this kind of cave and then move on to the left side and finally add the right, okay? Uh, so very carefully, just going over the same shape. This is actually an opportunity for me to also fix the shape of the swan itself. So you'll see how I'm gonna do that in just a moment. Going at it here, now onto the left side. The ripples I'm fine with, so there isn't too much to correct. I'm just going over what's already there. This is easier in some ways because it's already there. You know exactly what you paint. All you have to do is get it a little darker, but it can also be harder in some senses um, because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be complacent and then end up ruining the shapes you already have. Okay. So now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break this wash here and start working on the right section because I want these two to meet. Uh, vertically. So I'm mixing something that's of a similar consistency. I wonder if one of these should be white. You know what? No, they're good. Let's cover the whole thing up like that. There we go. Just very careful. Fixing the shapes of some of these highlights as I go along, but I'm pretty much happy with them. Now the lower we go, which is actually the higher, I'm gonna water this a bit and make it lighter all the way to the top where it's gonna to be much lighter. The reason is the farther um, water in the farther distance is in fact lighter. If you look at the reference photo very carefully. Now, when we're doing this, we're running the risk of reawakening all of the different ripples we put in earlier. That's just a risk I'm willing to take. Um, and because it's water, it's so fluid, it should be slightly reawakened. Here you see I'm fixing the shape of this one. I don't mind if some of it is gonna reawaken. That's the thing, because it's water, it's playing in our favor. So if I'm gonna, you know, make some of these blur, bl blurry, it's gonna be fine. And connecting to this section, whoops, almost got a major blooper going on here. So around this, around that, this should probably be even farther down. So let's go like this. And here I can honestly just continue with what I've got. Let's get a bit more blue. Go around the face. Now what we essentially did was strengthen the contrast between the swan's white and the water, okay? So we made the water darker, thus making the swan lighter. That was the main purpose of what we did. Now we're gonna flip it and hope for the best because you sometimes don't see it exactly as it is. Here we go. I think that's much better. I think that's much um, more true to the source. And in fact, with this, I can comfortably call this one done. 
I probably, if I had gone back, I'd make this area a little lighter, which I still can, but you know, let's leave it at that. I think we're fine here. Um, what I can do to make this area a little lighter, and I may regret it, because you know, whenever you say, oh, maybe let me just do this, and then you can mess things up, but let me just do this. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a bit of warmer, um, let's see here, warm highlights to this area that will correspond with the direction of the ripples, okay? I may end up regretting this, but let's go for it. I'd much rather, this is actually way too blue, I don't know how it got this blue, but I'd rather uh, regret this than, you know, thinking about whether I should have or shouldn't have done that, okay? So just follow the direction of the ripples, get this section a little lighter. Actually, I have a good idea. Let's cover the whole thing up with the direction of the ripples. Like so, make it a little darker here as it gets closer to us. But then what I'm gonna do for the top most areas, I'm just gonna dab some of it out. See, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it's not overworked. Still shows the direction of the ripples. Now the beak could be a little darker near the edge. Let me add just a bit of pure red here. Looks like it's more red near the bottom. The thing is it's not too dark. So it's kind of a tight rope I'm walking here. Blend this right in. <laughs> but I think with that, we're done. I don't want to overwork it, but check it out. And I'm gonna let it dry. You know what, let's let it dry then remove the tape and everything. So time for the tape removal. Now, if I'm being honest with myself, what we got here is a very nice um, impression of the swan. It's not photorealistic in my opinion. Now here's the thing. To get this to be to the next level, let's say, to be actually photorealistic, it requires a bit more accuracy on my part. Meaning, and that's for you out there if you want to say, okay, this is great, I love that, that's actually a step forward for me, but how do I get it to look really realistic? The thing is, it's just working slower and being more patient, which means all of these things that I kind of interpreted, the ripples, you don't have that luxury, you actually have to calculate and put them in more accurately especially the darker layer on top of the base layer for the reflection you have to get that to be even more accurate you have to get the nuances of the value more accurate you have to these ripples these um, reflections from the water reflected light you have to get them to be as accurate as you can look at the water it has some yet lighter reflections in it you have to take these into consideration when you see the highly photorealistic results that's how you get it done. For me personally, I'm one, not interested in it, two, it'll make for too large, too long of a video, and mostly I'm not interested in that. Um, but if you're interested in that, you slow down, you make the drawing more accurate, you make the details more accurate, you match the colors and values more accurately, that's all there is to it. It's tricky, it can seem very hard to, to do and hard to get, it is possible. Okay, you just have to slow down, take it easy and, and really put time in it. So for example, this one took, I think a total of 40 minutes of work, maybe 30 minutes of work. To make this photorealistic, I would argue it would take two hours, three hours, okay, for this small size. So it's just a matter of how long you're willing to put into it, how much, how sensitive you are to the smaller details. You know, there are far more darker reflections there in the background. So all of this goes into consideration. For me, I'm quite happy with it and hopefully it gives you an idea of how to paint the reflections and ripples in the water realistically. So with that, we're gonna wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And once again, if you wanna reach more and more realistic results, you have to take your time, work a little slower, okay? Now, if you wanna learn how to paint like me, paint loosely, enjoy yourself, enjoy the process, get the results you want, be sure to check out my frustration-free watercolor course, link in the description box below. And also, as I said, I'm, I've been using the Skoda Plain Air sets quite frequently recently. This one uh, is one of my favorites, the black set, and I will link down to that below as well, okay? I wanna thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you still haven't. I have tons of other tutorials and videos like this one and others. Thank you so much. I will see you again in the next vid real soon.